Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Rebecca again with another fragrance review. Uh, today, I'm going to do one that I did a blind buy on earlier. I just had some uh, credit at a store and I needed to use a card. I figured, hey, I pick up a new fragrance that I've never tried. Uh, kind of just did like a, you know, just found one that I've, I've sort of heard, haven't heard of, but I have. Um, uh, but I, you know, kind of want to try something new and kind of, you know, a little adventurous feeling today. So I just went ahead and bought this one. Uh, this uh, designer is actually, uh, I always hear a lot about this designer through a friend of mine. She always talks about his purse. Uh, he, I guess his, his line makes purses. And I know they make clothes for sure. But uh, yeah, so they make, they make purses or whatever too. So she's always talking about the quality of the purse and how, um, how nice they are or whatever. So that's why the name stuck out. And I also heard, I think it was Robes 08, I believe, that, that talked about um, Mark who talked about this fragrance once. can't remember what he compared it to or what he was talking about, but I just remember the name and stuck out. I remember he said he, he, it, was a, it was a good fragrance, so that's the only reason why I picked it up. Plus, I've never smelt it before. Uh, and that is Michael Coors by Michael Coors. So this is a um, aromatic fougere um, that was released in 19, or I'm sorry, 2001. And uh, the nose behind this is Harry Fremont. So, um, yeah, uh, so I haven't, like I said before, I haven't heard too much about this fragrance. And uh, apparently this is the only uh, men's fragrance in the Michael Kors, uh, in his fragrance, line of fragrances. And I looked it up and there is only, like, this is the only one and there's like probably 20 female fragrances. So, um, apparently he wanted to make this one his signature scent and he stopped at this one so i respect that i have a little respect for him for doing that uh he could have uh, he, he probably could have made uh, lots of others and gone in other directions but he decided right now anyway to just go with this one so or at least since 2001 so that's pretty cool that he did that so let's start with the presentation comes in this cool little nifty box which really impressed me um kind of reminds me of a uh of a uh, when you buy business cards, you know, and it, the business cards that come in a cardboard box like this, and it slides up, but this is actually sideways. So um, you know, it slides out like that. It's got a cool little deal here, you know, and that's some little padding cardboard in there, whatnot. This is silver, uh, you know, not not like super awesome, but you know, pretty cool. I don't see too many fragrances that have this little side opening here like this. Uh, the bottle. Uh, it's a very, very nice, uh, thick glass bottle. Reminds me of uh, uh, Ancre Noir's by Lalique, and it also reminds me of Gucci Porom too. It has this really thick, high quality, um, thick bottle here. Uh, don't care so much for the plastic cap here. Kind of reminds me of uh, Animal Animal. Kind of has like that plastic with like the fake marbling they got going on there. Uh, maybe I think it's black and looks like they just melted some white plastic and kind of swirled it around to kind of make like a marbleization looking thing here. But all in all, it's a, it's a good looking bottle, good presentation. I uh, got the got the deal, uh, the information at the bottom. This is a 2.5 ounce bottle. Um, let's see here. Let's talk about some notes here. Um, the notes at the top we have coriander, fir resin, uh, tarragon, star anise, caraway, bergamot. Cardamom and cinnamon. Uh, the mid we have tobacco, uh, incense, and suede. And the base we finish with sandalwood, plum, patchouli, and dried fruits. Okay, what do I get from this one? Let's waste the spray and check it out here. Good sprayer, by the way. Alright. From the top, let me just say that this thing starts off extremely strong. It's really, really strong. It's an aromatic fougere, so, I mean, that's what it's supposed to do. It starts off really spicy. Spicy and boozy is what you get. Almost like a whiskey, uh, a picture-pouring whiskey on, like, a bunch of, uh, I guess it's the fur resin and the coriander and the cardamom uh, and the cinnamon. Cause it's, just, it's just all, like, a, if you just picture a big bag of, like, um, of... Uh, herbs and, and spices and stuff and you just dump in whiskey on that and it really starts off with that uh, there's no whiskey in this but that's just what it smells like um starts off it's really strong i mean like if if you're not careful you know it it stings the nostrils like he says in the in anchorman uh, but you know it just it 
just lets you, it just kind of gives you an indication that uh, to uh, go easy on the trigger. Um, because I think I only put on a couple, I, I tried this on this afternoon and wore it all day. Um, so I learned that it only takes a few sprays, maybe one spray on each arm, you know. But, so it starts off, yeah, it starts off uh, really strong, uh, real herbally, real uh, green and, um, and earthy and uh, spicy. Uh, you get kind of a honey whiskey and you get some, um, and after the initial opening, it starts to get a little sweet and it starts to smell uh, like dried fruit, like plum. Um, you get... Uh, you get some uh, uh, like like dried apricots, the sticky, uh, the sticky fruits. You know that are dried. You got the apricots and the raisins and plum, stuff like that. Um, and uh, and and after after a little bit longer, you get this really nice cherry plum wine uh, smell. It it it, it go, like the booziness at first starts kind of kind of bourbony, kind of whiskeyish, and then it switches to like a wine almost, like a plum wine. A cherry plum wine, and um, and then the tobacco uh, starts to come into play, and it gets kind of um, you can, the tobacco comes in there, kind of settle, kind of settles everything down, um, but it still is spicy. I mean, this thing's just really, it's just really, um, it's really strong, you know, uh, to, at the beginning. After about ten minutes, uh, this fragrance lightens up. And um, the fruit and tobacco and the spice are just calmed down. It's pretty much the same thing that I, I was describing before, but it's just calmed down quite a bit. And um, let's see here. Um, it, it, it's, it's funny because it's, it's very uh, spicy, but it's really cooling. It's weird. Like you put your nose to it and it's just, uh, it's just really sweet and uh, kind, of, kind of thick and sticky smelling, if you will. Um, but it, but it's also very cool. It's very cooling to the nose when you when you when you breathe it in. So it kind of has a, it kind of has some cool effects going on here. Um, and after after about you know maybe the first hour, it's where it kind of it kind of settles into that um, that booziness and that spiciness stays there for a while. And then after about an hour or so, it it, it really just calms down. The dry downs pretty much a very calm down version of what I described before, but it gets powdery. And it's just really, it's really nice, you know, um, it, really nice. I mean, the tobacco, the tobacco and the, um, the main, the main players here are the, um, tobacco, the patchouli, the, I believe the fur resins. I don't really get star, star anise too much, uh, although you might pick it up here and there. You might pick up a little hint of it here and there. There's just so much going on that like throughout the day, like I sprayed it on my arm earlier, like from here to here, and throughout the day I would take a smell, start here, and then go up on my arm and start from here to here and just take one big whiff. And I would smell like plum right here, and then it would go into some tobacco over here and almost like some sweet whiskey honey over here. It's it's weird. It's just, maybe it's just the way it laid on my skin. I, I don't understand how that worked, but it was it was pretty cool. Um, I tried it on this afternoon, and um, the cold front just moved here in Texas, so it's really cold outside. It's probably like I think this afternoon it was probably 30 degrees, 28 degrees or something like that. And the wind was blowing. So, I mean, this was like the perfect time to um, to wear it, to try this fragrance out. I mean, it's it's a perfect winter fragrance. I mean, the, it, it was overcast today. It was, uh, the, the, the wind was blowing, the leaves were falling and blowing around. And so, to have this, you know, tickling my nose and, and uh, having this in the air... And that's the other thing too. When you smell it, and you kind of, you kind of take your arm away for a while, like the smell stays in your nostrils for a long time, for 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 a while. You know, you don't have to put your your nose back on your arm because then the smell stays in there for a while, and kind of just hangs out in your nose, which means it's usually a really strong fragrance. You know, good quality. Um, yeah. So like I said, you know, earlier it was really cold and it was just perfect. You know, gave me some really great like scent memories. You know. Um, this this you know it's it's a really unique fragrance because the way it starts off it's it's very masculine and very mature um, you know this is this is this can be compared to like an 80s powerhouse kind of cologne um, but it's it's better than that because it has the whiskey notes and the fruit and the tobacco so it, so it goes in a different direction than the 80s uh, powerhouse colognes um, so it kind of has it kind of it's reminiscent of that but it's 
it's completely just like a new age thing. It's just it's completely two thousands, you know, or whatever. This decade, I guess, or that decade, two thousand one. Uh, but you know, it really is like a modern scent to me. It still smells really good, and still, um, you know, um, it still has a lot to do with the scents we have today. You know, and I think you can really enjoy it today. Um, this is uh, this is a mature professional man's fragrance. Um, I don't even think I'm I'm professional enough to pull this stuff off. Um, you know, uh, it's a great work scent. I think that if you have a job like you know, in a building and you, uh, you drive a nice luxury car and you wear suits every day to work or you wear a tie at least, you know, and you gotta be, you gotta be on your best game all the time. This scent is perfect for that. Um, it just, uh, I really, I really, it's funny. I, I was trying to think of a picture of like, who, who would wear this, you know, cause, uh, right now I don't think I could wear it cause you know, I don't, I, mean, I, would, I would wear it just, you know, for fun or whatever, but I wouldn't do it justice with my profession, and I'm just a little too laid back. I'm a little more casual. Um, but this, honestly, I picture uh, the most interesting man in the world, you know, the guy from the Dos Equis commercial, uh, the way he looks, like the gray hair and the beard with the suit on, uh, but but in, but in, in, in my mind's eye, he's he's smoking a fine cigar and drinking a nice whiskey or even... A plum wine or a wine, you know, something with alcohol that has the fermented, the fermented alcohol fruity smell to it. So maybe some whiskey or some, some plum wine, um, uh, and sitting in a nice leather chair. Um, now there's no leather in this. There is suede. So I wonder if maybe the suede is giving me that, that leathery type of vibe, even though they're not really the same. I wonder if that's where I'm getting that, that that picture of my mind of sitting in a fine leather chair and uh, you know he's going to be like in a study where there's going to be like books in the background um, you know like as a you know and just in a really big house with a with a fireplace and you know two car, two or three cars parked up front you know with the the cul-de-sac driveway or whatever the driveway that pulls through and just a really a really uh, pretty much a, a man is really well off you know really nice job a lot of money uh, this job this this fragrance just takes takes me there uh, and of course in my little apartment here uh, being a musician I don't make a lot of money so uh, I make enough to get by but you know clearly uh, not what I'm describing here um, you know uh, I wore this uh, I wore this pretty much all day you know what I do for for a living uh, my day job anyway I uh, don't get to be around too many people you know not 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 long enough for them to really enjoy my fragrances I was really just testing it for me to see what I liked about it so I didn't get too many compliments uh, from this but uh, I do believe that it would it would garner many compliments it's really it's really boozy it's it's a, it's a lot like a, 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 a amen um, pure malt uh, with um, you know um, with maybe mix with a little bit of the of the honey and tobacco from um, from uh, pure Havan. so if you kind of mix those two it, it would might even get that that sort of uh, that same vibe you know but even smelling it now I just I really do just picture like plums like just a juicy plum and you just take a bite out of it and put your nose in it uh, and the tobacco it's really playing it's really doing that with me right now it's a strong like almost grape like you know plum grape almost type of thing it's really really nice you know it's like i'm getting like lost here uh but yeah so it's it's a, it's a really it's a really nice fragrance you know it's it's really uh it's really classy it it demands um professionalism you know um this isn't for everybody i, I would i wouldn't blind by this you know i would say that uh um i would test it first if you could uh get your hands on it um but if you like um pure malt and uh pure havan and um, I think someone else uh, compared it to uh, John Varvatos, the one with the black around the bottle, I believe. Uh, then you would like this one. I forgot the name of it, but uh, you know. So apparently, uh, that's what it smells like. I haven't had a chance to try that one, but uh, so yeah, you know, um, yeah, I think I would get her some compliments. So we'll go with uh, so with the so with the with the uh, seasons. Like I said before, it's going to be winter or fall. Preferably a cold winter, but fall I think this would be good too, you know, um, maybe 50s, 60s. Uh, but definitely it's going to be a fall winter scent. Cold months only for this one. I think it would be way too intrusive if you, if you used it in the winter. 
I mean in the summer, but if you did, like I, like I said with any of my fragrances, if you decide to use any of these, any winter fragrances in summer, then just go easy on the trigger and you should be fine. You know, one or two sprays, but I think this one's thick enough, it cuts through the air, it, it just works perfect with the setting and the mood and uh, 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 the feeling of fall and of winter, you know, that, that thin air and the nice, the coolness on your cheek of the wind blowing on you, it's just really nice. Um, See, the longevity, you know, it, it lasted quite a bit on my skin, actually. It lasted f probably six, seven hours, so, and that was even when I got home and I had to reapply more a little bit earlier so I could uh, kind of get a feel for it again before I took my notes down here. Um, so, I, you know, I'm going to go ahead and say it's it's at least five to seven, eight hours, you know, which is, um, you know, I've read other people say it's pretty spotty. They get three to four. On my skin, I get pretty good longevity. Um, the sillage, you know, it's it's it, I don't it's not really popping from my skin, but then again I would catch wafts of it, so I know it, I know it's out there, you know, uh, I know it's I know there is a sillage, you know, trail, um, but you know I didn't over apply this, so um, I would say you know beware of that, don't don't go overboard on this fragrance, uh, you might you could choke somebody out, you had the, the possibility is there, um, so you know I don't know it was it was pretty, it was pretty moderate, you know I would say from my experience this afternoon. Um, so uh, my longevity, I'm going to give it an eight out of ten because it did do its job. Um, uh, from for you know a day's of, a day's work is about eight hours. So if you go into work and you spray it out in the morning, you should be fine till till you get off of work. <coughs> um, and the um, the projection, you know, hey, it's it's uh, if it's a work scent, you know, you really don't want to offend those around you. You know, it's it it really is more like I really wanted to try this out for me. When I put it on, I was like, man, this is really nice. You know, it's just, I don't hear too much about this one. Um, and I think it might be an underrated fragrance. I don't know. Uh, I don't hear too many people really talking about it too much. But uh, definitely it's one to uh, it's definitely one to, to, to try, you know, maybe have in your collection. Because I don't have anything like this in my collection. I have a lot of other, you know, uh, things similar to it. But this is pretty unique in its own right. Um, the scent, it's a good scent. I mean, it's it's boozy it's sweet it's it's honeyish it's um uh, tobacco-y i mean it's got some good things going on there so the overall scent i'm gonna give it an eight out of ten it's pretty much just my overall rating for this fragrance is gonna be an eight out of ten i mean it was nice it was really nice you know uh the dried fruits really stand out the tobacco the patchouli um there's incense in this too not so much like the sweet churchy incense that you'd find in some fragrances it's more of a subtle incense but it's still there you know so, um, yeah, so that was uh, Michael Coors uh, with the same name, Michael Coors for men. And, uh, yeah, the 2.5. The uh, price point I found on this for the 2.5 that I own, it's still pretty expensive. Uh, I believe it was $48, which, you know, it's still kind of up there, you know. Uh, so, like I said before, try, try this one out before. Maybe you can go on perfumedcore.com and pick up a sample if they even have this one. I don't know. Um, but, uh, 48 bucks, and I believe, like, uh, the 3.4 or whatever was still pretty up there, too. It was, like, 65 or 70. So, this stuff still got, you know, pretty good price point, so I'm guessing it's still selling pretty good. Uh, I don't know if I've seen it in any, um, any big, um, uh, department stores yet. Uh, I definitely didn't see this one in any, any, uh, cheap bins, either, so, um, so, yeah, that's Michael Coors, and, uh, that was my review on that, so, uh, you know, um, I have some more, some other fragrances that I'll be coming up. I actually just got this one today. I, you know, I did my, my mini haul video, and I've been meaning to get to those. But today, I was like, oh, I'll just go ahead and do this one. You know, it's pretty, it's a pretty interesting fragrance. So, uh, anyway, so uh, red comment, subscribe. Let me know if you've uh, tried this one before. Let me know if you like it. Let me know if you hate it. Let me know if uh, you know anything that smells like it. Just you know, to let me know what's going on. To tell me how your day was. Uh, you know, just whatever. You know. So. Uh, I am. Uh, I did a little more uh, thinking about my contest that I'm going to do, and uh, I got a little um, little giveaway that I want to do. Not really sure exactly what uh, I want to give away. If I don't give away a full bottle of something, I want to give away some samples of some of my really good stuff that maybe some of you, uh, some of you uh, beginners, or even some of you collectors who just haven't gotten your hands on some of these really good fragrances. Um, I might do like a little. Um, 
uh, sample pack of some uh, of some little four milliliter uh, samples, you know, some uh, atomizers or whatever. Um, you know, maybe some uh, DHI and some some Shergi, maybe a little bit of uh, Ventus in there. Some you know some stuff that you guys probably you know, haven't tried every day. You know, some of my good stuff. Um, you know, but I, I do want to have a little contest in it. Uh, it's not going to be too. Uh, it's not going to be too uh, hard to follow the instructions or anything. Uh, we're going to just try to help each other out. You help me, I help you. And um, I saw that Sebastian used a uh, website the other day called random.org, maybe. And it's going to involve names. And I believe this website, you put your names in there and you click a button and it mixes all the names up and it picks one up. So it's going to be, you know, it's going to be fair and even for everybody. Everyone's going to have a chance to win. Uh, but again, I'll, I'll, I'll go think of the more, uh, some more details and stuff, make sure it's foolproof. And uh, make sure that no one gets uh, gypped or anything like that. Make sure it's completely fair and everyone has opportunity to win. Uh, but that should be coming up hopefully soon. You know, I think it'd be a lot of fun uh, to, to to help somebody out with some some really nice fragrances. You know, I got some some niche uh, some niche quality stuff that I could give away some some little samples of or whatever. So uh, okay, well. Look out for that video. I'll have some details with that coming up soon. I'm sure um, I don't have any gigs this weekend, so maybe I'll do another video of another review. Uh, maybe tomorrow or Saturday or something like that, you know. Uh, so, yeah. So, please rate, comment, subscribe. Uh, take care of yourselves. Uh, be safe out there. And until the next time, take care.